soulmates and brothers in exile, is not this life. Hath not old custom made this life more sweet than painted rum? Are not these woods more free of peril than the envious court? Here we feel but the penalty of Adam. The seasons change as the icy fang and churlish chidings of the winter wind which as they bite and blow upon my body till I almost shrink with cold, I smile and say, these are not flatterers, huh? <laughs> these are counselors that feelingly persuade me what I am. Sweet are the uses of adversity, which like a toad, Ugly and venomous, yet bears a precious jewel in its head. And this, our life, exempt from public haunts, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stone, and good in everything. I would not change it. <laughs> Happy is your grace, I can translate the stubbornness of fortune into so quiet and sweet a style. <sighs> Come, let us kill us some venison! <laughs> <laughs> and yet, it irks me <laughs> that these poor dappled fools, chief burghers of this desert city, should in their confines with their forked heads have their round haunches gored! <laughs> oh. Indeed, my lord. The melancholy Jakes grieves at that, and swears to that kind you do more usurp than doth your brother. What? That hath banished you. Oh. I did steal behind him as he lay under an oak to the witch place, a poor sequestered stag that from the hunter's aim hath taken a hurt, did come to languish. And my lord, the wretched creature he bore such groans that their discharge did stretch his leathered hide almost to bursting and the big round tears coursed one another down his innocent nose in piteous chase. The hairy fool, much marked of the melancholy Jakes, stood on the extremest verge of a swift brook, augmenting it with tears. Ha! And what said Jakes? Did he not moralize upon the subject? Oh yes, into a thousand similes. First, for his weeping into the needless stream, poor dear, Quoth he, <laughs> Thou makest a testament as worldlings do, giving thy sum of more to that which hath too much. Then, being there alone, left and abandoned of his velvet friend, Tis right, quoth he, Tis just the fashion, thus doth misery part the flux of company. Anon, a careless herd, full of the pasture, jumps along by and never stays to greet him. Tis right, quoth he. <laughs> Sweep on, you fat and greasy citizens. Wherefore do you look upon this poor and broken bankrupt there? Thus, most infectively, he pierceth through the body of the country, city, court, and yea, of this our lives, swearing that we are mere usurpers, tyrants, and what's worse, to fright the animals and kill them up in their assigned and native dwelling places. <laughs> And did you leave him in this contemplation? I did indeed, my lord. Show me where he is. I love to cope him in these sullen fits, for he is full of matter. I'll take you to him straight. Can it be that no man hath seen him? It cannot be. Some villains of my court are content in sufferance in this. My daughter, her cousin, Orlando Du Bois. Find the brother. Bring the gallant hither. If he be absent, bring the brother to me and I'll make him find him. Do it suddenly. And let not search or inquisition quail to bring again these foolish runaways. Who's there? Master, my sweet master, why, what make you here? 
Why? What, what's the matter? Oh, unhappy, you come not within these doors. Within this roof, the enemy of all thy graces lives. Your brother, your brother, they the son. No, I will not call him son of him I was about to call his father. Your brother hath heard your praises and means this night to burn the lodging where you used to lie and you within it. If he fail of that, he will have other means to cut you off. I overheard him and his practices. This is no place. This house is but a butchery. Abhor it, fear it, do not enter it. Well, where wouldst thou have me go? No matter whither, so you come not here. And what wouldst thou have me do? Go and beg my food? Or with a base and boisterous sword enforce a thievish living on the common road? I would rather subject me to the malice of a diverted blood and bloody brother. But do not so. I have five hundred crowns. The thrifty hire I saved under your father. All this I give you. Let me be your servant. Though I am old, yet am I strong and lusty. I will, I will serve you as a younger man in all your business and necessities. How well indeed appears the constant service of the antique world. <laughs> now, not for the fashion of these times, where none sweat but for promotion. And on having that, do choke themselves up even with the having. It is not so indeed. The poor old man, thou art prune a rotten tree. That cannot so much as a blossom yield, in lieu of all thy pains and husbandry. <laughs> but come thy ways. Ha! We'll go along together. Yes. And ere we have thy youthful wages spent, we'll light upon some settled low content. Good master. Lead the way, and I will follow you with loyalty and truth to the last gasp. <laughs> oh, most gentle Jupiter, how weary are my spirits! I care not about my spirits if my legs were not weary! <laughs> I could find it in my heart to disgrace my man's apparel and to cry like a woman. But doublet and hose ought to show itself courageous to petticoat, and therefore, courage! Good Eliana! <laughs> I pray you, one of you bear with me, I cannot go any further. <laughs> For my part, I would rather bear with you than bear you. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> <laughs>